Hello everyone! After having just finished the Chozo Mythos series of adventure games, I wanted to come back and do a review on the series as a whole. So the Chozo Mythos is a series of four psychological horror adventure games, made and released for free by Ben Croshaw. Now what I'm going to do is start by breaking them down individually, in the order that they were released, and then I'll end by talking about the series as a whole. My overall feeling about all of the games, by the way, is that they're really damn good and well worth your time. Seriously, they're damn good. There's some things about them that I really don't like, but they're really, really good overall. So let's delve into it. The first game, Five Days a Stranger, was released in 2003. In it, you play as Trilby, a highly skilled thief who breaks into Defoe Manor and finds himself trapped inside by some sort of paranormal force. My favorite part of this game is definitely the writing. It's really good, but everything else is unfortunately not so good. The graphics are very simple. They're not very pleasant to look at, frankly, but they do the job. The sound design is pretty sparse. There's actually some pretty good MIDI music, but other than that, there's actually very little sound at all. There's long stretches of time where there's literally no sound, just awkward silence. And the footstep sounds that you hear as you move around all the time sound very cheap. And I've long believed that good footstep sounds are really underrated and extremely important, given how often you hear them as you walk around all the time, and, well, these don't sound too good. The puzzles are also rather old school in their design in the worst way possible. They tend to be fiddly and annoying. In one case from this game, there's a conversation puzzle that basically reduces the person you're talking to into a strange kind of robot. It's one of those things where you have to pick just the right series of options to convince them to do something, and it becomes a case of repeating the conversation again and again, exhausting every option until you get the right series of options in the dialogue tree. I would recommend having a walkthrough handy and using it anytime you get stuck. The control scheme is uh, it's a simple point-and-click interface where you select an action and then click where you want to perform it. For example, you select walk and then click on the ground, or you select examine and then click on an item. Uh, it works fine but compared to more polished, kind of modern point-and-click control schemes, it requires quite a lot of clicks to do simple things like just walking somewhere. Okay, so that's a lot of negative things, isn't it? And I said I really like these games, so what's up with that? Well, let's once again return to the writing. It's really good. It ends up becoming a psychological horror detective sort of game. I mean, you're trapped inside the manor with, a, with this horrific presence that keeps trying to kill you. And the only way out is to learn more about this presence, find out uh, where it came from and how to defeat it. And every day you spend in the manor results in more and more horrific things happening. It's really fascinating to learn more about its origins by reading dusty old books and diaries, and it's engaging as hell to try and defeat it and escape. So despite not caring very much for any part of the game other than the writing, I feel like the writing is really strong enough to carry it. The second game, Seven Days a Skeptic, was released in 2004. It takes place around 400 years after the first game. I know, big time shift. <laughs> 400 years after the first game. In it, you play Dr. Jonathan Somerset, the psychiatrist for the spaceship Mephistopheles. Despite the huge time difference between the two games, the events from the first game actually very much play into what happens on board the Mephistopheles. And the events from this game play heavily into the next two. Just like the first one, writing is its strongest element. Almost every other part is exactly the same as the first. Sound design is the same, graphics are the same, and so on. Really, the only difference is that the puzzles are quite possibly even more annoying and fiddly. And actually, something that's actually nice that they changed is that the control scheme has been polished up and that requires less clicks to do simple things, which is quite nice. So, back to the writing once again. The storyline for this one is very much like the first, but it's even more claustrophobic. Before you were stuck in a manor, but now you're stuck in a ship, with nothing around you but the void of space, blackness in every direction. It's a wonderful setting for a horror game. I'd also say that it has more of a focus on survival, rather than the more detective-focused story of the original, but I was actually perfectly fine with this because I just I love sci-fi horror, so it was very cool to have that change of tone and feeling from the first one. The third game, Trilby's Notes, was released in 2006. It goes back in time and actually picks up the story of Trilby a little bit after where we left him in the first game. 
It's also the most radical departure from the previous games in terms of mechanics, because it uses text parsing instead of a point-and-click interface. This means you move around with the arrow keys and type text to do the actions. So, for example, you can walk up to a door and you might type Use Lockpicks on Door to pick the lock. This was actually my first experience with text parsing, and it actually taught me that I hate text parsing. <laughs> the puzzles that were previously annoying became even more so, and the simple act of picking up matches from a counter actually became a puzzle in and of itself. The other elements, like sound design and graphics, are still the same as the previous two games. But the writing, once again, saves the day. Despite this being the most frustrating game for me to play, it was actually one of the most engaging because it really takes the writing up to a whole different level. The first two were pretty simple stories, but this one involves actually seeing snippets of the past, seeing visions going deeper and deeper into the past as you get to the origin of a mystery. It's a really great storytelling device and it works wonderfully to slowly and engagingly reveal more of the mystery. This one really blew me away and it might be my favorite of the series. The fourth and final game, Six Days a Sacrifice, was released in 2007. It takes place 196 years after the original game, and 196 years before the third game that was on board the Mephistopheles. I know, it, the time keeps changing all over the place, and it's kind of confusing. But let me say that again. It takes place 196 years after the original, and 196 years before the third one that was set in space and far in the future. And in it... You play as Theo DeCabe, a building inspector that performs an inspection on the wrong building at the wrong time. Despite the time difference between it and the other games, it actually heavily, heavily involves the plots and characters from all of them, and ties them all together in a way. The sound design and all of that stuff is basically the same as the others, although the control scheme actually in this one returns to that of the second game, with its simple and polished point-and-click interface, so it ditches the text parsing, much to my happiness. So, once again, we turn to the writing. The story for this one is absolutely bonkers. It takes all of the storylines and characters from around 196 years before, and around 196 years after, with everything aboard the Mephistopheles and all of that, and it ties them all together. Somehow. <laughs> I don't know if I can explain it without spoiling it, and I'm not even sure I understand it myself, so I won't. Suffice to say, it involves spirits and sacrifices and beings from other realms. The story sits in that wonderful spot of being strange and complex enough that I didn't understand everything on one playthrough, but there's still enough concrete story to grab onto that I wasn't completely lost. I just really loved all the strange places it went to, and it it's pretty much tied with the third game for being my favorite. The way it ties together all of the previous games is really mind-blowing. I mean, if you think of a series of games, you think of four games released over many, many years that also take place within their universes. They take place literally hundreds of years apart. And some of the visions that you, uh, that you see from the third game, when you look into the past to discover more about the mystery, some of those visions take place, I think, even more than hundreds of years in the past, so... All of the storyline for this whole series takes place over an extremely long period of time. So trying to tie all of that together in one game is really mind-blowing and amazing. You think something... I mean, I, I would think something like that would become incredibly complex and unwieldy and confusing, right? So many different time periods, all these different characters, what the hell is going on? But amazingly, no, everything ties together really well. All of the basics of the story make sense, even if all, even if some of the details are strange and I don't quite understand them. Still, the basic story makes sense. It's really impressive how uh, this, just the structure of the entire series as a whole and how they manage to tie everything together. It's really amazing. So, now that I'm looking back on the series as a whole, I can see that it, it has a lot of problems. But the strength of the writing really just overshadowed all of them. And the Chozo Mythos games are now one of my favorite adventure game series of all time. And I put it right alongside games like the Blackwell and the Longest Journey series. It's that good. So, there's my thoughts on the Chozo Mythos series. 
Once again, all of them were made and released for free by Ben Croshaw. So if you'd like to try the series for yourself, which I would highly recommend, I'll have a link in the description. Just make sure to have a walkthrough handy.